Hey, Noctis here. Uh, switch playing Shadowrun Returns. We just defeated the assholes and got in touch with the spirits. We're heading back to the Seamstress Union. After hours. When you return to the Seamstress Union in the early hours of the morning, it seems a completely, completely different place. Bereft of the normal crowd that haunts it, the bar feels desolate, almost abandoned. It's eerie, like the back hallways of hotels and shopping malls. But you finally have a break in your case. A sample of the Ripper's blood. You just need to find someone to help you analyze it. Alright. Analyze DNA evidence. Skip butters in the back. Alright, get the now. Gathered around the intimate back bar, Miss Kibota and her and her courtier gather for breakfast, with the lady herself doing the cooking. The smell of soy calf and something resembling sausages fills the room. What's in these sausages? Evening, sir. What's the word around town, Chloe? There's more talk of the Ripper killings. Some people saying they're hate crimes on account of the victims all being human. What if I told you the prime suspects were an elf and a troll? Still doesn't mean the, the killings were racially motivated. People are just too quick to label something a hate crime. Check the census. The city is still 66% humans. Close your eyes and throw a rock. You're more than likely to hit a human. Doesn't make it a hate crime. Still a crime though, and that should be enough. <clears throat> this is the first real rise you've seen out of Mr. Cluey, but he reins himself in with a roll of his thick shoulders and a smoothing of his jacket. Don't worry, I'm not going to start throwing rocks. Wouldn't want to reinforce the stereotype. I'll leave you to your business, sir. Alright, Kubota. You gonna... Ohio, would you like some... Forgive me, I, oh my, but you look like hell. Thanks, just the welcome I was looking for. <laughs> she looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Anyone you can walk away from is a good run. Helps the other team doesn't walk away. No one to follow you. I can tell you've been busy, and I can see by the look on your face there's something you need. Is this about the Ripper? Yep, I found some DNA evidence and need help analyzing it. That is excellent. I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I'm certain someone in the safe house will be able to help you if they're awake. It is likely that you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. May I take a sausage? Take the whole plate. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Y yes, I'm aware. I know. Fucking just bring me down. <sighs> Digital world. You've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's going to require a trip to cyberspace and the back to the ID. Yeah, can't speak. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's going to require a trip to cyberspace and back to ID the Ripper. The Matrix, the cybernetic analog of Inside the Grid, the worldwide computer network. A digital world, information brought to life. Inside cyberspace, your avatar does all the work while your meat body is left behind. All around your avatar are pathways to other nodes filled with data. I see counterintrusion programs. And other jacked in runners. Cyberspace has many dangers has as many dangers as the meat world, and more. Locked doors, security countermeasures, and black ice that can fry a decker's brain. Every moment you make in the matrix be tracked, if you aren't careful. Get dumped shocked out and your brain gets fuzzy for a bit. Get hit by an enemy decker and you could die. <laughs> that didn't surprise me at all. Alright, let's talk with David. Morning! You look like you've been up all night. You look like you've seen some action too. I suppose I could use shower. I suppose I could use a shower. Hit it by equipment? Negative. Need a DNA analysis. If I can help you out? Hmm. That castle's equipment isn't really up, to set, really isn't really set up for that. However, I could employ a semiconductor chip. It could decode DNA using a voltage change instead of light. That would eliminate the use of highly expensive equipment that would be required otherwise. I just read a journal about it, so the information is still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you want to know about it? The owner's identity? Ah, uh, it's beyond me. All I can get you is a gene code sequence. But that's where I come in. David, if you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner down via Matrix Run. 
Will do. Let me have the DNA you want to test. Grendel, when David gives me the sequence, I'll jack in and help you trace the blood sample back to its source. Thanks, guys. This works. We, we may find the Emerald City Ripper. Oh, Drek. Wake up, Johnny boy. You got work to do. And Grendel, if you need any gear, I'll be right here. I just got a second win. Meet you at my rig. Yeah. Meet you at my rig, Grendel. God fucking damn it. We got Van Grass over there. So hoping it's a piece of quiet tonight. You got something for me? I got a flight recorder. Wouldn't have to know any. Wouldn't happen to be an Aries flight recorder, would it? Some very powerful buyer is looking for that night now. Looking for that right now. I can get rid of it for you. Say 20%. That leaves 2000 for you. Deal. Because I don't have business. Fuck. Alright. Johnny. Thanks to the semiconductor based gene sequence system that David employed, we should have the information we need to track the Ripper in the Matrix. I'm really impressed with his results, considering it was his first attempt. He was utilizing an unproven technique he'd read about in the science journal, and he was working from memory on minimum sleep. Sounds fascinating. If there's time later, maybe you can tell more about it. Yes, maybe we can sit down with David and he can share his research. But stay focused. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> We hit the Lone Star DNA database first to see if our donor has a prior criminal record. They have extensive DNA archives. Then we go hunting based on what we find. Let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix. I can get into their private grid easily, but I gotta warn you. Once we're in, could it be a little rough? How much decking experience have you had? No experience, what now? I have a triad net here. It's a headband you wear that lets you piggyback me in the matrix. You'll see and hear everything I do. Alright. All right, killer, medic, suppression, sniffer, and an execute attacker. I have no programs, so fuck it. That's the best we're gonna get. Whew, shit. Your synapses light up as you connect your consciousness to the digital world. Although you aren't jacking like Johnny, the sensation is overwhelming and electrifying. You can only imagine the way it feels for him. All right, we're in. This, this art, that arch will take us to the next node. Uh, shit. Nope. Do the story ahead is defended by intrusion countermeasures. Hmm. No, not yet. Missed. Oh, fuck me. We got us some white ice. White sentry. Might as well fry that shit. Missed. Shielding all incoming damage. Vulnerable incoming damage. You're a prick. Alright. Alright. Welcome to the Matrix. Motherfucker. And that should take care of it. ST is down. Let's see if there is a match for his fingerprint. DNA match located, 100% match, arrest records database. Silas Forsberg, status deceased, profession, chop, sop, chop shop surgical assistant, priors breaking entering, two counts, public indecency, one count, brought in for questioning on, account, on accusations of unlicensed plastic surgery, no charges were filed. Let's do a dead man? Let's keep looking. Autopsy records. Mm. 
No, I'm getting over here. Fuck this. Missed. Missed. And down. Okay, let's get this shit over with. Missed. Down. Autopsy records. Autopsy records. Subject Silas Forsberg. Notes subject was found overdose on half a dozen different sedatives. Several anti anxiety medications were also found in his system. Face was mutilated, possibly self inflicted. Identity could not be confirmed immediately due to the disfigurement. Had to check dental records to confirm. No next of kin. Large puncture wounds were found in several places on the body, possible large bore surgical needles. Body had been decomposing for several weeks before the landlord noticed the smell and called the police when no one answered the door. Ah, <sighs> fucking glorious. It's one of these. Great. This is gonna end so fucking perfectly well. Two more hits in the name of Silas Forsberg. Fuck me. All right. Really? Taking the shit down. 75 IP damage. Let's just take this son of a bitch out. Alright. News article. Newsnet. One. Return on subject. Silas Forsberg. The body of Silas Forsberg, a chop shop surgical assistant, was found in an apartment in S Snohomish earlier this week. The body had been there for as long as a month when Forsberg's landlord noticed a rancid smell and contacted the authorities. Lone Star representatives have issued a statement saying Forsberg's death has been ruled a suicide. According to wounds, his report, uh, according to reports, his body was a mass of puncture wounds, and the cause of death was determined to be an overdose of anti-stress medication and sedatives. The man's employer claims he was a dedicated employee, although he suffered from bouts of depression. Forsberg next, next of kin cannot be located, but the attorney appointed to his estate has located a will written weeks prior leaving all of his belongings to a psychiatrist. The identity of the psychiatrist has not been released due to privacy concerns, yet another sad end to a life as is far too common here in the sprawl. Mm. Jack out of the land. All right. So here's what we know. A DNA evidence belongs to a dead man whose death was never explained. He worked in with chop shops, which fits the living guy that you met. The news net says he left his estate to a psychiatrist. Maybe finding out who the psychiatrist was will give us our next clue. My gut says we can deck the medical board's records and reverse trace to find its doctor. You win? Punch man. All right. Take this shit out. 
All we got left is a white ice eye. Take it out. And then let's get this shit dealt with. Searching metal records, Silas Forsberg. Uh, oh fuck. All right, 2020 to 2030. Pediatric, pediatric record partial. One particular pediatrician's entry stands out from the rest. Ooh. Child suffers from a chronic depression and social anxiety, most likely caused by his physical abnormalities. We've seen many cases like this recently, with the outbreak of changeling children being born. With the aberrant physiology we're seeing, there is no telling what sort of brain functions are affected. Prescribed a series of sedatives last year that seemed to have no effect, upping the dosage. Okay, so he was a changeling. Oh, fuck. Data missing or corrupted. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that file is quite large and takes well over an hour to read through. The final entry, however, is most significant. It is written by Dr. Henry Holmes. Silas has overcome significant mental disorders and no longer goes through periods of violent episodes. Latest medications have proven especially effective, but I believe that being treated by another elf has significantly impacted his treatment. Unfortunately, my efforts to maintain an emotional boundary with him have proven challenging. He's bonded to me in an, un an unhealthy and frankly an unnerving way. His hero worship exhibits, exhibits itself in the form of mimic speech patterns in adopting my dress. For this reason, and for the health of the patient, I'm assigning another doctor to, to his case. I will inform him of this at his next session. Ooh, that is... Fuck. Oh, fuck. Alright. Fuck, fuck. What ice? Oh, uh, this is not going to end well. Speaking of somebody who's played fucking Riggers or uh, Deckers before, Black Ice fucking sucks. All right. And down. Medical board two. Employment records. Henry Hollings Holmes, MD, PhD. Current employment status. Currently holds position of chief psychiatrist, chief psychiatrist and administrator at Mercy Mental Hospital, Snohomish, Washington, UCAS. All right, previous employers. Uh, 45 to 54, psychiatrist and resident, Mer Mercy Mental Hospital. 40 to 45, attending psychiatrist, Mercy Mental. Uh, 30 to 40, private practice. All right, back to meat space. I will deal with the stunning. Reality is at the end of day contextual and as the meat world comes back into focus your head once again tries to settle on which world is the real one While a philosophical question lingers your meat body demands food and drink you disconnect from your deck to find that the Union safe house has risen All right, David, what's up? David looks almost as tired as you do you can tell that this case has gone under his skin like it has yours any luck in there? We found an exact match for the DNA, but it was linked to a dead shop shop assistant by the name of Silas Forsberg. Now I have my theories. What do you think is going on here, Grendel? DNA evidence was one of the killer. There's still a possibility. You seem pretty sure when we got here that it did. What about Silas's autopsy report? Anything stand out? The face was so mangled that they had to use dental records. Good catch. That matches up with something I've seen run a try. It's easy enough to find a body shot that'll make a replica set of teeth for you. 
Find some schlub off the street no one will miss, swap the teeth out, and throw the heat off your trail for a while. Luckily, I've never been that desperate. Why would he need to go to those links? Did the police records have something linking him to a different crime? He had a prior for unlicensed plastic surgery. True, wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. I think this is coming, beginning to come together. Late Silas left all, left all his belongings with doctor. Dr. Holmes, employment record, records have him as the administrator of Mercy Mental, and the picture on his file matches the person you saw downtown, the same person this DNA belongs to. All the evidence points to him being your killer, whoever he really is. I should go find this Dr. Holmes and ask him some very pointed questions. Please pay him my respects. I always find that high caliber rounds get the message across. You should clearly hire some friends to go loaded for bear. I side loaded a ton of valuable data from those Lone Star Matrix nodes. Here's your cut. I'll see you later. Hmm. Alright. Grubberman. How long am I in the trade, man? Calfrey. July 8th, 38. At 6.13 in the morning, it was a Thursday. Wanted to debate plot my skills as a merc in half a dozen wars. <laughs> Official otherwise. Never did take the rain the shadows like some of the boys I knew. Too subtle for my taste, I suppose. And da 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 da. Boating accident. <laughs> oh, it's all so stupid. Some as from some as were lobbing smokers behind our lines. More to mess with, with us than anything. Let's have to toss one back, and didn't it just figure that the one I grab ain't a smoker? Got it off, only barely shredded my own arm, but good. Got plenty of other scars to remember the moment by, but, well, the arm was a big one. So take a word of advice from an old soldier. Make sure you're never holding a grenade in one hand unless you just pulled the pin with the other. <laughs> uh, let's see what you got, man. Uh, mm, got 10,000 new yen. Axe. Drones, don't, nope. Street sweeper. Alright. Hmm. Grab an axe. Hmm. And an Uzi. Now we're good. Alright. Mersman. Algernon. Let's talk with David. Now I'm good. <laughs> Never mind. I forgot he was. Yeah. Alright. So this episode's getting a bit long. Sit down, gentle. I'm going to end this here, then get the runners, start the run, and see you in the next episode. Alright? See ya!